Our next topic is going to be hyperthyroidism and all the different types and causes of hyperthyroidism that they're going to test you on on the exam. We're going to go over the first three topics where you're going to be able to distinguish them by the, the radioactive iodine uptake findings. Now, the first patient that has physical findings, such as eye, skin, and nail findings, eye findings being the Graves ophthalmopathy, where you're talking about the proptosis and the exophthalmus. If the patient has these physical findings with an increased T3 and T4, as well as an increased radioactive iodine uptake with a decrease in their TSH, you're thinking Graves' disease. Now, Graves' disease, if they have sympathetic symptoms, the first thing we've got to worry about is the heart. So we have to protect the heart. So the first step is going to be beta blockers if they have sympathetic symptoms. Next, we're going to give PTU or methimazole to bring the gland under control. Now, the only difference between PTU and methimazole is one, that P2 has a shorter half-life than methimazole. Methimazole has about a five, five and a half hour half-life. But the main thing is that PTU can be used safely in pregnancy. We can't use methimazole in pregnancy because it can actually cause a side effect in the baby known as aplasia cutis, cutis which is a scalp defect. So once we um, gave them beta blockers, we gave them PTU or methimazole, and the patient is stable, we then radioactively ablate the gland with radioactive iodine. But you have to remember, we can only give radioactive iodine once the patient is stable, because if we give radioactive iodine to a patient that's symptomatic, it's actually gonna worsen the Graves' disease. It's gonna worsen the symptoms. So you gotta remember, radioactive iodine in the symptomatic patient is contraindicated. We have to make sure the patient is stable and asymptomatic uh, in order to uh, give this patient radioactive iodine. So we, our first step in the symptomatic patient was beta blockers. Then we gave PTU or methimazole. Then we gave the patient radioactive iodine once the patient was stable. And then we're going to follow this patient every six months. And when they become hypothyroid, we're going to give them T4, replace that T4. And the best thing to see if these medications are working is to measure the free T4. The reason is TSH actually has a two-week lag time. That's why we're going to measure the free T4 to see if these medications are working. In pregnant women, the treatment changes a little bit. The management changes a little bit. And you may have read that you just do surgery in pregnant women, but that's not necessarily true. It depends on what trimester the pregnant woman is in. If it's a first trimester pregnant woman, we're going to give the patient low-dose PTU. And second trimester and after, we're going to do surgery on the patient. Other times we're going to do surgery on the patient is pregnant women that are unresponsive to PTU in the first trimester, or patients with tracheal compression. We're also gonna do a surgery in patients with tracheal compression. So we got a patient with physical manifestations, increased T3, T4, increased radioactive iodine uptake with a decreased TSH. If they have sympathetic symptoms, we started them with beta blockers to protect the heart. We then gave them PTU or methimazole to bring the gland under control. Once the patient is under control, we do radioactive iodine ablation and follow the patient every six months. And when they become hypothyroid, we give them T4. Pregnant women, first trimester, low dose PTU, second trimester surgery, and also patients that have tracheal compression or pregnant patients unresponsive to PTU, we also do surgery in those patients. One thing you wanna remember about um, Propyl, uh, PTU and propanolol is that the, um, these cannot help the Graves' ophthalmopathy. So the only physical findings that can get worse despite treatment with PTU and propanolol is the Graves' ophthalmopathy, the Graves' exophthalmus that happens and the Graves' proptosis that happens. It can actually get worse despite treatment. All the other ones can get better. The next patient has no physical findings. So that's the first thing we're going to see that distinguishes it from Graves' disease. They have an increased T3 and an increased T4 with a decreased TSH, just like the Graves patient, but they have a normal radioactive iodine uptake. And this patient has silent thyroiditis. So silent thyroiditis, how do we distinguish it from Graves? No physical findings like Graves and a normal radioactive iodine uptake, unlike Graves, that has an increased radioactive iodine uptake. Silent thyroiditis, we're only treating the patients that are symptomatic, and symptomatic patients are going to get beta blockers. But if the patient is asymptomatic, 
there's no treatment. Next is subacute thyroiditis. And just like Graves and silent thyroiditis, subacute thyroiditis also has an increased T3, increased T4, and decreased TSH. However, this patient has a tender gland. And this patient has a decrease in the radioactive iodine uptake. So whereas Graves' disease has an increased radioactive iodine uptake and silent thyroiditis has a normal radioactive iodine uptake, subacute thyroiditis has a decreased radioactive iodine uptake. And the main thing you, you can see on your exam is that the patient's going to have a tender gland. And in silent thyroiditis, the patient has a non-tender gland. And for subacute thyroiditis, you're just treating the inflammation. You're going to treat the patient with aspirin. And if they don't respond to aspirin, you're gonna give the patient prednisone. Next, if the patient has a history of a viral syndrome with a decreased T3 and a normal T4 and TSH, this is euthyroid 6 syndrome, also known as low T3 syndrome. The reason why we call it a low T3 syndrome is because the only thing that's abnormal is the decreased T3. Everything else is normal. So you thyroid 6 syndrome, look for a history of viral syndrome with a low T3. That's you thyroid sick. And you actually don't have to treat this patient with thyroid. We're just going to repeat thyroid function in eight weeks. If the patient has increased T3 and an increased T4, but they have an increase in their TSH, we know that TSH comes from what? The pituitary. So if they have an increase in TSH, you know it's coming from the pituitary with an increased T3 and an increased T4, this is a pituitary adenoma. And our next step is going to be MRI of the brain, and we're going to remove the adenoma. And finally, you have a patient with a non-palpable thyroid gland with an increased T4 and a decreased TSH and a decreased radioactive iodine uptake. This patient, you're thinking exogenous administration of thyroid hormone, and the biopsy is going to show a follicular atrophy. So here, increased T4, decreased TSH with a decreased radioactive iodine uptake. However, this patient is going to have atrophy of the thyroid gland. Remember, subacute thyroiditis has a tender thyroid gland. This is going to have atrophy of the thyroid gland. So the main things we want to look at when we're trying to figure out what the diagnosis is does the patient have physical findings? Does the patient have a tender or non-tender gland? Does the patient have a history of a viral syndrome? And does the patient have an increase in their TSH? These things are going to um, help you to distinguish between the different types of hyperthyroidism and the management of the